Hello, and welcome to From a Basement in Tulsa. I'm Jason Ferguson. I'm here with some good friends, dudes, and ma'am. Hey, hello, say hello. Dude, ma'am. Dudes and dudettes. <laughs> Please, introduce yourselves. We, we, we've got Sam and Brand J here. Yes. I can introduce you guys, I'm sorry. Yeah, I know you. <laughs> From, I think, episode six or five, and things have changed, but... It's not that different, I guess. But hello again. Mr. Nathan Wright is here. Hi. I, hope, I hope that's your name. <laughs> Jackal Maxson. Uh, but, but hello, man. And here, now you can say things about yourselves for a moment. Ladies first. <laughs> I'm Brian J. Hello, Brian J. Happy to be back. I'm glad Thanks for here. having us. This is cool. Um, just released, finally gave birth to that big baby I was yeah. carrying called Power Source. It's mm. out. Ten pounds, five ounces. Ten, about ten pounds, five ounces. Thousand pounds, maybe. Whew. It's out, and uh, we had really good success on the uh, album release. These guys were there to share it with me and play in the band and deal with all the craziness. That. I, I got to play that show, too, and that was so fun. It was such a beautiful night, yeah. even with the weird sound thing for a while. <laughs> they finally got that fixed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it worked out. You still sounded good, though. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, great. I was very I, shocked. I was, that was awesome. There's a couple pictures of me standing there smoking my e because I was up there for a while just hanging out. And like, I was like, why are, why are you guys taking pictures already? This is weird. <laughs> but it was, You look it cool, was, though. It was, it was, I had a huge like cloud of e smoke, and I, I kind of looked douchey a little bit. But uh, <laughs> Oh, I think it looked cool. <laughs> just <laughs> chalk it up to stage effects like, yeah. it's, it's for the lasers man man i i don't have a great e-cig i haven't gotten to the like the art of building your own coils and you can like manufacture your own stuff but some people oh. are and i was at brady a couple weeks ago like a sunday and somebody from the very top was puffing on their e-cigarette and i saw from this like the, the, the fog and and the lights in the very back of Brady, and he like fogged up the area. And a couple seconds later, it made it all the way to the stage. It started like fogging up the stage. Wow. And I was like, "Good grief, that's a lot of guys a pro. That's a lot of fake smoke." Yeah, I'm proud the of biggest you. steampunkiest looking e <laughs> yeah. I've ever seen. Are owned by high schoolers. It's like yeah. made of copper. Wow, really? I've got some students that are into it, and they're just they're just mm. enormous. Like they look like really? light, lightsabers or something. Right. Yeah, extremists. <laughs> and I mean, it's pretty cool, but. I haven't gotten so far. Into Did you it. say make their own, like make their own oil for it and stuff? Uh, I, you can order. I think you can order the oil and flavor it yourself. Cool. That'd be make. I'd make a clove one. I like. Oh, yeah, I that. heard clove. that clove. Clove would clove. be really good. There is a clove one. There has to be. That sounds. Yeah, the one on Brookside has clove. Mm. Check them out. Sounds, they haven't make, made bacon yet. You can. Ooh. Oh, that's bacon. Bacon. Yes. That sounds you know so it would sell. Yes. Just hit it. <laughs> it was, yeah. Just hit it. We could bacon. Just, make just hit bacon. it. Smoke your bacon. <laughs> Smoke your bacon. That's the real way to test if bacon is good for truly everything. <laughs> you can smoke, it. smoke the fucking bacon. Smoke it. <laughs> no, I'll pass. I never. I've I've gotten conned a few times by bacon flavored things. I thought I bought like bacon jerky once, and Ooh, it was just wait. okay. Mm. It yeah. was like bacon jerky. Well, yeah. Sam uh, Sam used. I can vouch yep. that Sam once used bacon shaving cream. Yeah. Whoa. You were going there, weren't you? Didn't didn't it smell did like smell, bacon at all? It did smell like bacon once you got it wet. Yeah, I, maybe that was. Which is it was still shitty weird. shaving cream. It was terrible. <laughs> Whole Foods has some bacon chocolate. It's awesome. That's good. that's good. Just yeah. bacon and salt and chocolate. Mm-hmm. I love it. That sounds what like else a pretty do you great need? mix. Yeah. <laughs> well, Nathan, Hello, say something about yourself, sir. Hello and welcome to my basement. Uh, about myself. My real name's Nathaniel, oh. but nobody calls me that it's an interesting fact <laughs> i'm never ever called by my real name and that's fine uh I, I i i like music i play music a lot i teach private lessons and uh do a lot of writing of music on the side i've i got i've bumped into one of the weirdest little niche career paths that i've encountered and that's that uh sometimes people want to have a wedding that's very ritzy sort of uh but but they didn't grow up listening to classical music or anything they didn't you know they so they just they hire somebody to turn songs that they like into things like string quartets ah. Whoa, cool. it's this weird thing dope 
and it's actually extraordinarily popular. I mean, there's a, a string quartet around town, the Tulsa Rock Quartet. I usually write for them. They outsource the arrangements to me, and I just write them before the wedding. But, you know, they just show up. They don't rehearse them. They just Slot. throw it down. You know, it's, I've, I've done some Metallica songs. <laughs> and on the other hand, I've done, I've done huh. some Bjork or In Flaming Lips. I've done a Radiohead tune. It's really cool. Cool. Neat. I bet you've done some Elton John. I did do one Elton John song. Yeah. I bet you did some Beatles. See, I did do one Beatles tune, yeah. <laughs> do you have to get invited to a wedding to hear this? Because this sounds awesome. No, actually, I don't get invited, and I always make a point to show up and pretend like I was. <laughs> That's what he was asking, I think. Like, would yeah. we, could could we, we show just up show and pretend? up, maybe? And yeah, listen. I don't see why not. I mean, I've, I, I've, I've taken a friend with me before, because I want to hear what the, how they turned out, you know? Yeah, you so could always can, throw out the composer card, like, fuck you, I composed this. I can, <laughs> I can be here. I got a bow tie. <laughs> I'm more important than the bride and groom here. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> Speaking of weddings, we're a lot more of our friends are going to start having weddings here pretty quick, and isn't that yep. stupid exciting for? I mean, for Oklahoma and a few other states. Oh yeah, I was so excited when I read the news. Yeah, that's great news. Mary yeah. Fallon is pissed. She's real She's angry. So oh pissed. yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I, was like, I, was like, Just, I was like, I don't think you follow. I was Sam. a little late too. <laughs> I was like, which one of our musician friends are getting married? I wish now. I could podcast the look on my face, like <laughs> looking at Nathan Bran. Uh, no, I don't know what the <laughs> fuck. Man, I I think Facebook. This is a creepy thing. I think about Facebook. Mm. So I know I have friends that are really pissed off about gay people being able to get married in Oklahoma. I know I have like. Like those friends that are, but I haven't seen any of it in my feed at all. And mm. I think Facebook is like, they know that I don't want to see that. So they just mm. like post what I would like to see because of my likes in the past and everything. Mm. And that's really weird to me that Facebook is that good at that. And that wow. Bit, well, I think it's just evaluating odd. what you've already liked. Wait, yeah. so it knows Facebook that you're not has a filter that is oh, Facebook pretty has, much it's all has filtered. crazy. Like, it's all filtered, the whole thing. Things. I mean, otherwise you'd log in and you'd have like, your news yeah. feed would be like, a thousand items long it's totally so filtered based off what stuff. you like and oh, yeah. what so you don't want to see I, and what you want to see and what you share and what you click on and that's why it's like 85 percent kitty cat videos <laughs> that explains, yes <laughs> i'm absolutely. like yeah <laughs> this many people are posting these kitty cats <laughs> and well, well it's, it's fucking cute yeah I, I feel like that's actually that has nothing to do with the uh, the filters that's just <laughs> you have awesome friends but <laughs> can i get a kitty cat filter like political <laughs> <laughs> political things facebook is like i think they only show you what because they're trying to get <clears throat> likes so they only want to yeah. show you what you'll what, change you know? and uh it's crazy i've heard i've read some pretty insane things about it i, I read a cool story about a dude like trolling his roommate hmm. where he created an ad like like and made a group with like only one guy and a bunch of girls and set the ad to only show to men. So he had like super personalized ads going to their Facebook and he would put like creepy shit in there. Awesome. Like, I, don't, I can't, you'll have to something creepy. Mm, something we'll creepy. It and it was like, it was amazing how that works. And, uh, so I want to do that to some friends just randomly. I thought it was <laughs> creepy when I saw something on how many, uh, marketing companies are, potentially looking oh, at what you. you're looking that. at at the same time there mm -hmm. could be like anywhere from five to 25 different marketing that programs are that are watching page. what you're clicking on if i'm at work and i look something up on ebay like for my job because i'm a pawnbroker so we have to determine like the value of things constantly <laughs> so you have friends in the industry yeah <laughs> sorry to interrupt if I'm, <laughs> like if i'm looking up something on ebay to determine the value and then like 20 minutes later check my facebook which i'm not doing a lot jerry um, <laughs> I'll see like just on Jerry. my Facebook an ad for like this stupid ass trumpet that I just looked up for the job. Yeah, it's really weird. Yeah, there's an extension for Google Chrome that you can download. I can't remember what it's called, but it actually shows you who's tracking you, and it, it it's kind yeah. of a spider webby because that's once, what I saw. Once yeah, once one program. program starts tracking you, it actually starts linking up to other ones that piggyback on yep. it. And I think the developer of that program used to work for. Google directly and then either quit or got, and got fired or whichever and started <laughs> right like well let me bust it's what nuts. I was just so uh, Facebook is making. showing you all of your personal information to all of these things Dude. but as a musician it's like the reverse oh it's a great they show tool. it to as a musician they show it to nobody <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah. it, unless you pay <laughs> unless, you, unless pay. you pay yeah 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 unless you pay. And, and yeah it destroys friendships and it helps you promote as a musician <laughs> <laughs> thank you Facebook <laughs> Thank but you, yeah. Justin Timberlake. I, I I hoped 
good things from my space speaking of Justin Timberlake when he took it over I hoped good things I was like Boltons. Mm. didn't happen did it? I, I, still made, not really I think we talked about the same exact thing when you guys were here before did we talk about mm-hmm. MySpace I, think I don't so. think we talked about MySpace I, don't, I think that was a different one. Oh, yeah. okay. that was an S. I don't think that was us but still right. we don't have to do it again oh uh, yeah for sure <laughs> so tell me about your music Sam um, uh, uh, my name is Sam Jones I uh, am a guitar player and I'm a singer sometimes I like to write music um, let's see I'm playing in an awesome uh, reggae band called the Rebellion. Uh, they're they come to my mind because just uh, today I was at uh, Natura Digital Studios, which is owned by uh, Mr. David Teagarden Sr., an amazing man and uh, cool dude. And he has this just incredible studio. Nathan, you've been there, right? Yeah, I went there in high school. Oh man, out it's like uh, out way out in the boonies and. Uh, you go and you, and you go down this dirt road and you enter this, it looks like just farmland. And there's this beat up old shack that's just covered in wasps' nests. And, uh, you think, you know, there's no way this isn't just full of rusty tools. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you go in and it's just this immaculate studio, you know, with, with wood ceilings and, and just beautiful equipment. And, you know, the Grammy sitting on the top of the monitors. and That's always cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I touched it. I touched, <laughs> it. I touched the Grammy. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, we're out there recording a, uh, an album that's uh, going to be released here, hopefully within the next six months or so. And uh, we've got some, some big names on the album uh, as far as reggae artists go and... Uh, I gotta give a shout out to Brett Baldwin, who is the uh, uh, engineer out there. And as far as engineers that I've ever worked with in my life, this guy is just... I wish I could just keep him all the time to just EQ my life. Like, <laughs> it's like he and the Pro Tools program are one. He's just incredible. He knows what you want to do before you even mention it. And... uh I mean, just to be working with a dude like David Teagarden is incredible to me. I never thought I'd be there. That's excellent, man. Yep. And uh, still playing with Sam and the Stylies. Uh, we just went uh, to Eureka Springs, as we do a few times a year, and had a blast. Yeah, it was fun. Oh, man. Yeah. Love those guys. And hopefully we're going to get into the studio soon. I hope so, too. That's great, man. I'm excited for the Rebellion songs. And it sucks that this will be released afterwards, but I think Thursday you guys are playing with the yeah. dude from episode one on the podcast, L-Dub. Yeah, he was the first episode. Cool. So, uh, listeners, you missed a sweet show, or you saw a sweet show, if you happen to have been there. Right. But <laughs> that, that's pretty cool. And, and Nathan, I've, I've only seen you play once, I think, by yourself. I've seen you play in, with Brangie a bunch and probably other bands, but tell me more about your solo music or your solo projects along with your sweet string quartet <laughs> badass he's pretty sweet <laughs> no. cool at the moment uh i'm spending a lot of creative energy on a band called we make shapes I play with uh damien shade uh he has this acoustic band called the savage young and that's how i met him i started playing with the savage young and dude's a badass yeah we recorded a record and <laughs> still waiting on that i think i actually like that on facebook i don't know that would be cool Back to Facebook, sorry, but we're good. We make shapes. <laughs> well, yeah, we make shapes. Is uh, we just turned one year old. Uh, we're planning on recording a record at some point, but we're taking our time. Uh, we just did a live recording last night uh, over at Yeti. Had some people hanging around and played through. Cool. And uh, we're trying to make some videos. Just kind of trying to do that marketing thing because I guess you got to do that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But it's a. Uh, mm. It's been really fun. It's just. Uh, Damien doing vocals and uh we he he makes tunes on his classic 808 his uh hardware beat machine <laughs> and it's fun we do arrangements and then I I play electric guitar uh with everything and it's kind of a weird awesome. hip hop psychedelic something yeah but that's been really fun it sounds incredible yeah and I'm then just... every now and then I'll book a gig and play with Fiona Forte and she's a blast to work with I I believe that I used to play at coffee shops with her, and then she did way better than me going <laughs> along. But but my excuse is she had been playing for a while and was like the headliner at the small coffee shop, and I was the open micer. <laughs> and I was like, oh my god, who is this angel, Fiona? And uh, I still feel that way. But <laughs> anyway, she's awesome. 
and back to, we're going in a circle with listeners, which is, I don't know if that's planned, but we're back to Brand J. Hi. And I want to talk more about your city release show because it was awesome. It was fun. And it, there were so many good musicians that played that night. And I want to. It was incredible. I want to know all of their names. Oh man! <laughs> it's like luck. it's like I had the it's list. Be a long and now, yeah, at least, at least the band names. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Um, who played? Jason Ferguson opened up the show. Yeah. Oh, thank you, sir. Great way to start a show. That was amazing. And uh, <laughs> then we had uh, Brian Hamilton. Uh, yes. He's great, or he goes by Brian Lamar. Excuse oh. me. Um, and he is an awesome singer, songwriter, guitar player, frontman of his own band. So he got to actually do the whole thing, which is really neat. And uh, he also is an amazing in studio engineer. Oh, He's really, really, yeah. He and he um, plays cello and roll around guy. He's cool. He's got great energy on stage. I yes. love it. Just yeah, he's he's awesome. I, I wasn't expecting that because like the intro was, he's finally venturing out of the studio, and I was like, yeah. uh oh. Yeah, but he's going to be a statue. Yeah, but no, no way. He, he rocked it. Yes, absolutely did. Um, and then who we have after Bryant? Um, after Bryant was uh, Miss Brandy Hamilton. Mm. Incredible. Incredible, awesome, vocalist. Oh, yeah. My. So what is it, sister from another mister? Yes, mm-hmm. I can rhyme two words. <laughs> you should write songs. I should write Artist. songs. <laughs> and uh, she did, um, she just had a two-piece band. So she had her husband, which is Bobby Moffat, amazing, amazing piano player. Love Bobby. Taught by ear, taught himself. He's amazing. I didn't know they were married. <laughs> <I'm married. laughs> cool. We're going to edit that yeah, out in they're post. Married. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, they're married. They just got married in June. Right on. Just this year. So you're not too late on the news. I was in the wedding. Good. I was in the wedding. I was a bridesmaid. You looked beautiful. I spilt wine on my dress. Oh. But they forgave it. It was okay. (laughs) Just a small little bit of (laughs) red wine on a white dress. Nothing big. (laughs) Nothing cliche. Off white. (laughs) (laughs) And um, yeah, she had a drummer and her and Bobby did some original tunes. It was awesome. And then uh, there was uh, Mason. Mason also um, plays drums for us when we do the full band thing. Wish she was here. I wish she was here. Couldn't make it tonight. I think he's still in the studio. Hey, what was the stage name that he was doing? He, he goes by Mason. It was just Mason? It's just Mason. Yeah. Okay. Seems simple. And I thought it was something else. Nope. The Mason Experience oh, is his yeah. whole thing. Yeah. Okay, I thought you meant. Oh, there doing it is. That, that Jimi Hendrix thing. The Mason thing. Experience. Yeah. The Mason Experience. It's an experience. It is an experience. It is. So he brought his drummer down, Dot, from um, Oklahoma City. Awesome guy, too. Awesome dude. Played with some major names. Yeah. Been on some tours. Erica Badu, that's a big one. Mm-hmm. Um, And then after... <sighs> Dang. Was it... Uh, um, was it LaCroix after that? Uh, uh, no. It was... Uh, I said Mason, then it was Brandy Hamilton. And then, yes, you were right, Sam. It was Anthony Delacroix. It was so painful to say. <laughs> what am I missing here? <laughs> Sam was right. Oh. <laughs> That's what you, oh, great. You missed it. Okay. Um, As usual. Anthony Delacroix played. Uh, he did uh, awesome underground hip hop artist. He's behind uh, the uh, Tulsa Renaissance movement documentary that's been going on and bubbling under under the surfaces mm-hmm. of Tulsa. Like liquid hot magma. Like liquid bubbles. hot bubbles. <laughs> Bursting through the seams. Great, awesome guy. He's just a good good friend, great musician, great person. Yeah. And he's just one of those people when he looks at you, he's looking at my soul. Yeah. Like he's just like so <laughs> intense and awesome. Yeah. So he had some special guests. Um, Julian came up and did some poetry and sang. And then after that, do you remember the set? After that, I think it was Dina. Ah, Dina Burks. Dina Burks is an awesome. awesome friend of mine. She is a, um, she's a musician. She is a singer. She's a poet. She's a dancer. She's known very well for all around Tulsa for teaching West African traditional dance. So she's like went over there to the motherland, learned how they did it for real. You know, <laughs> came back over here and. Um, has been working. She's got 15 years experience and she's a percussionist and been trained playing percussion. So she did that with the dancing and she made the costumes and just an all around awesome, talented woman. That was incredible. 
I it was incredible. Oh, I, I didn't know what to expect. It was great. At first, it was just the poetry. I was like, oh, this is awesome. But then, Oh, I was yeah, like, she opened up with a piece. Yeah, and, right. I, and then I was like, but there's instruments back there. Something else right. cool is going to happen. Yeah. It just kept getting cooler and cooler until there's somebody in a costume dancing around on the stage. Yeah. It was It, it was, was a big mask, sweet. right? They yeah. They wore that yeah. big old yeah. mask. Dina, oh Dina made God, that. I was going to mention She made mask. that. She made that mask. Yeah, that thing she is. made it. The whole They just did, I mean... There's t- so much talent. Oh, my gosh. It was crazy because when I put them in lineup, you know, there were a lot of artists that we just didn't have time. And I got really mm-hmm. excited and was just like, who's <laughs> down? Who wants to play? And all these people were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'm like, and oh, like, shit. Like, <laughs> now I got to organize this. Really, <laughs> now it needs to be organized. Holy shit. So yeah. I started like breaking up times. And realistically, could people bring a 15 minute show? You yeah. know, just bring 15 minutes. And I just got it in my head. It's going to work. We can pull it together. It's going to work. And when we got the uh, the drums. <laughs> <laughs> One down for Sammy. One down for Sammy. That's two down. Oh, two down. Two. <laughs> so when we got the drums, you know, it was kind of like, how is this going to work? And Dino's one drums mic'd. And I was thinking we didn't, you know, would carry. And you know, it was just crazy. But we got it figured out, went early. And... It was awesome. They they killed it. Killed it with the lighting. It was great. Yeah. Um, I don't remember who was after that. Sam and the Stylies. Oh, <clears> right. <throat> it's an awesome band. Yeah. I think you've heard of them. Yep. Nathan, have you heard of Sam and the Stylies? Who again? I, I think <laughs> the, it's actually the Smileys. Stan and the Smileys. Smileys. Yeah. Something like I that. I have heard them. Yeah. Something strands. Strands mm-hmm. of Dave and the assholes. I saw them at D Fest twenty years ago or something. Oh, right. <laughs> twenty years ago. <laughs> That's like almost. Damn it. Almost That's twenty like, years. It's <laughs> like one of my favorite Tulsa, like real down home country bands. Yeah. Like, it takes me a lot. To yeah, really it's like enjoy. a country gospel thing. Yeah, they're cool. <laughs> but. But they had, just en- <laughs> they had just enough modern time country right. to just make it awesome. Yeah, make it make it digestible to everybody. My favorite yeah. part of it is their belt buckles. They have an <laughs> amazing compilation of belt buckles. How many animals were killed making their boots? There's like rattlesnake skin and it's goat in, skin and alligator. It's yeah, skin. it's almost a baker's dozen. I believe it. Country man, yeah, man. Country. <laughs> what are you gonna do? <laughs> it pays. <laughs> and we, we shouldn't forget to shout out the bitchin' venue. Oh yeah, that place is so cool. Undercurrent's awesome. Undercurrent is awesome. I, it, it's across big, the street. Big shout out to Billy Stark. Billy, man, love you. He's a he's a good dude. I'm really happy for him. I'm happy that that venue is so badass. Like I didn't know what to expect before I went the first time, mm-hmm. and it, yeah. it kind of. It's in a shopping center. Yeah. Right. You don't awesome. think... Memorial, because... Yeah. yeah, like 41st Memorial. Sure. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, this is going to be odd, but, you know, it was awesome. It's, it's awesome. one of the coolest rooms around. It's... Yeah. And the sound is good most of the time. Yeah. Depending on who's back behind that board. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah. Well. But, yeah, the sound is good every time. great. <laughs> I mean, and I love Billy and, uh, you know, the whole undercurrent staff, because... They typically only had like heavy metal bands and shit playing there, which is nothing wrong with that. You know, I get my groove, but that was it. Yeah. You know, real smoky, like, you know, like them bands. Yeah. So he didn't want that anymore. And he said, I I want that, but I also want to do a lot of other different things too. I want to be more of a venue than just a metal bar. So he actually approached me months ago back when um i pulled in brandy hamilton to do the double vision concert there and we wanted to see if we could pull an audience and we did i mean we we weren't you know throwing backflips about the numbers but it wasn't slow we had a busy night so we thought well we can do it yeah he allowed the venue to go like smoke free for the night for the album release yeah so our lights could look less cool so <laughs> no, that's, so cool. that's what jason so that I, was for so I that vapor, i could man. breathe yeah. <laughs> so that i could breathe and, and that was a busy night let me it explain was busy. how busy it was there was only standing room and i was in the standing in the very back and i leaned my arm on a bar and all of a sudden a man like runs quickly and nervously up behind the bar and i look up behind myself and there's a camera there and it looks like i just bumped it with my elbow so there i'm feeling like a Oh, a man. jerk! Like I just ruined it. It was an take, accident, but I didn't hit it. I didn't, hit, didn't it, hit it, so it was okay. It was just broke. Like we were just nervous for a second. We kind of looked at it. I was like, "Oh, everything's okay. I'm gonna go stand somewhere else." Uh, but yeah, that, that explains how busy it was. That yeah. makes me feel good. <laughs> Did you say it was a take accident? 
A texident? A, a, <laughs> what? A texident? A texident? That's when yeah. somebody from Texas makes a mistake? No, that's when you make a mistake while texting. Oh, oh. texident. Okay, gotcha. Whoa. That's Were you texting? Word. I think you're onto something. I, I like that word. I thought it was a recording joke. Like, if you're recording something and something gets screwed up, you, you just made a takesident. Oh, takesident. Oh, oh takesident. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Made a few of those today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a horrible feeling, especially when it's at the end of the take and you screw up something stupid. Oh, man. Or or when you're doing a mix down <clears throat> and you realize that uh, there's an entire bridge section to which you do not have the backup vocals. Oh, that's... And then you have to go back in and lay the backup vocals. <laughs> Those are a little important. Not that that happened today or anything. Huh. It didn't. It didn't. I, I believe you. I'm a professional. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Man, but, but thanks for having me be a part of that show, Brand J. I had fun. Yeah, I'm so and, glad you agreed to do it. That's I'm, awesome. I'm glad you can stop saying or stop hearing this has never happened before. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I was I was thinking, like I was like, I hope nothing goes wrong during the podcast. I don't slip up and say, This, this has never happened before. This has never happened before. I told her that should have been the name of the album. This has never happened before. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. Crazy. And it could be the name of every album from now on. <laughs> yeah. Nope. This has never happened before. <laughs> Great point. Every <laughs> album should be named that. But uh, how relieved are you and excited that that is out now? I am excited that that part is over, and I'm excited for new stuff. So Yeah, I'm excited for you, too. Yeah. And it Thanks. sounds great. It Thanks. sounds really good. I Thank like you. It. I've been trying to listen to Pandora as much as possible, yeah. which I won't lie isn't that often because pa- I, I'm not a Pandora fan. Yeah. But I'll, I'll load up that John Legend yeah, it's so Station. random, it, you know, like after I made the announcement, mm-hmm. you know, after I realized, you know, and was talking to my Pandora Connect, it's like, dude, it's so random, like, they make it that way, so you can't go, hey, go listen to the station and listen to my song, like, they're literally doing, like, what Facebook does, like, yep. it is learning what you listen to, and it's feeding it, yeah. according to if you'll like it or not, so you can listen to it for 10 days and never, <laughs> right, it. after so, two yeah. days, I was like, man, I, yeah, I think that's what he told to me, <laughs> he's like, so, no, so those listeners one of you certainly if you listen to pandora and start a john legend station or go to it because it's probably already made a, a brand J's song will pop up and, <laughs> right uh, eventually a minute, eventually <laughs> and maybe I, uh, I was talking to my girlfriend actually was like oh yeah i started a, a station on pandora off a song and two years later the song probably played so i mean yeah some, some it's so random have, we might have to invest some time yeah but i'm excited it's very for it. you know i'm gonna freak you. out when it happens thank I'm, you i'm probably gonna get in trouble at work Oh. oh my God! Brand J's song is playing. Well, someone uh, <laughs> someone screenshot it, I guess, and, yeah. and sent it to me. So that is there. from somewhere, oh. yeah, from some. But I got, I, you know, I, the strangest thing I got my. They seen a report after the first seven days, and then yeah. you try again for seven days. So I've been on now for, you know, well past fourteen days. So we're waiting on a second report. So when the first report comes in, I mean, it really breaks it down on like who's listening, and like what part of the United States, what percentage broke out of broken down out of a hundred and 30%, uh, which was my largest chunk of listeners, uh, were from London and Canada. So awesome. people cool. were hearing it more often there, you know, because the, you know, Pandora's guessing your style and yeah. it's, you know, some weird smart person thing. Uh-huh. So it's it's way out of my that's, league. That's awesome that people you wouldn't normally have exactly. a connection with are like mm-hmm. listening to you. And that's why ass. it's like that. It's like, well, well it's it's like that so people can't say come vote for me or whatever. Yeah. Like it's random. Well, are people yeah. liking it? Of course they're liking it. Oh, yeah, we got really yeah. good number. Yeah, that's why we got a second week, so excellent. We'll yeah. I'm happy for Englandites you. Englandites have always loved you. Yeah. Everything I've ever done as far as sending it to England, even the dance stuff that I wasn't mm-hmm. even feeling in my heart, they were like, Yes. <laughs> come over and do a tour like <laughs> yeah they just love it so let's go let's go i don't let's know just if, do it i don't get those kind of reports i don't know i'm i'm pretty i pretty much just loaded my stuff up on the internet and said you know here you go do what you will i'm right. starting a podcast <laughs> 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 do what you here will you go with me. songs <laughs> 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 but uh i i don't remember where i was going with that but excellent thanks mm-hmm. <laughs> indeed 
<laughs> what, what do you have coming up next, Ranjay? I don't know. <laughs> no <clue. laughs> Excellent. It's not a joke. <laughs> not a joke. No, um, we have a few things actually that are open cases and nothing is closing yet. So there's work right now with um, doing um, a tour. And then there's also talk of traveling uh, with, um, it's also like a, um, it's a, like a fashion show that tours 50 states. So it's a designer and then they feature um, a band. So they're talking about Brinjo Wayne Wind. I think so too, oh, yeah. because they want me to model and they also want me to perform. How excellent. So we're talking now about how much is this going to cost? So it's one of those things that's an open book. You know how it is. It's just sort of like, it's a good opportunity, but is it really going to work? Is it going to be feasible or am I going to be able to get, you know, at least some of the shows? Cause like, we, can, we understand if, you know, it may not even be a 50 state, you know, thing for you, but on your surrounding cities that you can drive to is what we're talking about now. Like if you can drive to it, can you get there? So excellent. Then there's all, how much you going to pay us and how much you going to pay us? <laughs> how much you going to pay us? You're not going to pay me in, in I'm gonna be a and eat. <laughs> Will there be food? We'll see. I I remember the question I had. We were talking about the internet and putting our songs there. And I want to know the, like, silliest review you've had if you've, (laughs) if you've gotten that. Because I paid Reverb Nation to review some of my songs when I released it. And, like, they, I think they sent it to a couple hundred people to listen to it. And, like, got mostly positive reviews, but there were some just trolls being hilarious mm. sending me on. Like, <laughs> like, they hated my song way too much to, to really be serious. Mm-hmm. They were like, oh, this isn't good. They were like, oh, this guy's probably a pedophile and ugly. Uh, and mm-hmm. that was like... Oh, they're just going, how <laughs> sad those jerks. <laughs> it's yeah. like, it's not bad enough that you're a pedophile. You gotta be ugly, For too. <laughs> the <Man. fuck? laughs> You can't even be an attractive pedophile. That's <laughs> it's terrible. Kind of world. <laughs> It's over. Horrible. <laughs> Have you guys had that experience? Have you? No. <laughs> you mean I mean, I try not to read things. <laughs> well, the story is, is my song is, is like the lyrics of one of my songs is, I believe behind your painted eyes, something, there's a, a sweet little girl hiding uh-huh. behind something fake. And, uh, and it says the sweetest little girl in the lyrics. And the girls, the ladies are like, oh, that's a beautiful song. It made me fall in love. But some guy was like. That guy's probably ugly. He shouldn't be singing. Is this oh, a pedophile that's song? That's called shade. <laughs> They're probably that's what pedophile. I call shade. <laughs> uh, They're probably just hiding their problems. Right. That's how it works. Yeah, exactly song told. How, it works. how about you, Nathan? Nothing hilarious in review wise. Somebody been like, man, this Metallica song sounds like a ugly person wrote it. Uh, I wouldn't know. I can't read. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he only reads music. He sp- <laughs> speaks in music. Re- I mean, college was a lot of guessing. I can imagine. Just, yeah. I don't know. No, I, I, I guess it, if there, if I ever got well known enough for that to happen, <laughs> I, I didn't. The only didn't guessing I did in college was, well, I guess I'm not going to go to college, <laughs> <laughs> right? I, I produced an al- <clears throat> an album for a local group called Autumn Shade, uh, spearheaded by a great songwriter named Jess Lene. and uh, that got reviewed a little bit, but um, it was always in um german or swedish or something yeah. but I, hey, if it was a, a review in german it's just automatically going to sound negative i guess the funniest thing is that I, I tried to take the review uh what was the first one i don't know i think it it it, it, it might have been swedish and I, I tried to plug it into google translate I guess what it spit out was pretty funny because it was complete nonsense, <laughs> yes. just utter nonsense. But I got some good, good tone words in there. I think good was in there. So good, so good, good was in. I got, good. I got good. Good five stars. <laughs> they don't believe in stars there. No, 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 stars. no star system. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't believe in stars? <laughs> Take me through some of of Power Source, Brand J. Where Ooh. I, I love that. This is going to sound incredibly cheesy, and I'm looking forward to it. I love that your main influence is love. Like, you're like, everybody just love everybody. Uh, yeah. You didn't say it like the dude from... Yeah. You didn't say it's it like It's like, I want to say it really but. mean. <laughs> <laughs> just, just fucking love me. Shut up, yeah. <laughs> fucking But it was, it, it was really beautiful. And I think you may have teared up a little bit, uh-oh, at the City Release show. You may oh, definitely. Like, I tear up at shows a lot. You know, like, I try to, you know, like, music is... You know, it's it's whatever it is, but I try to be open, you know, like 
I try to be a good person, you know, like I'm a person and I do fucked up things sometimes too by accident and I try and fix things. I try and like solve problems and be a person that is just about love because there's enough other shit, you know, and you don't, and it's, and it's hard and part of it, you know, it's my heart and I, I do like challenges. You know, I'm one of those people that like, I'm extremely goal oriented or oriented. I do like, you know, challenge to be challenged. You know, I, I, you know, I love going through the process never in the beginning. You know, it's always fucking, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, Why did I do this? nobody <laughs> likes to do that. But when I, you know, find the strength and love and, and make it through and it, and become something different. Like I love that. And I want other people to feel how good that feels. So I just try and be, I don't know. I just try to be a good person. And with music, I feel like that is why I do music is it's just something that I'm, I'm good on stage. I can sing, I can hold an audience. So I'm re- I just want to use that as a tool to, be real about life talk about life you know the album's not all hearts and butterflies you know there's some anger and some regret and resentment and you know but it all should point back to love in the end and that's it that's it so yeah i do cry sometimes at shows because i'm just like man when i feel the love you know like because <laughs> it's it can be cheesy you know people want to hear like bullshit you know and uh. so when you're talking about good something good that makes you feel good then you know people have a tendency to you know be turned off by that so i feel it when i notice that other people feel it and they're like fuck yes so you guys want to feel love too you know what i mean like okay so yeah it's very emotional for me that's good yeah sorry i just went way deep no that's fine Uh, but it's not it's the truth pick a few of your favorites off power source um harmless exchange it's number six i believe um i love breathe i love that's it <laughs> that's all of them the rest of them are shit the rest are <laughs> shitty songs what are you guys' favorite songs to play off of Power Source since you're playing with her in, in the live scene tell the truth I'm trying to oh no that's the name of that song <laughs> I would not know you like playing tell the truth oh, yeah. I'd play but it more but I would even ooh I played it more. <laughs> it's fun. He was he was wearing his fun face yeah. when, he, when he sang that part. Crinkle the nose a little bit. Bang. <laughs> yeah. I like playing Sam's songs. It helps me pretend like I'm actually in Sam and the Stylies. <laughs> I like playing Sam's songs too. <laughs> Don't fucking patronize me. I t- we talked about this. I told you not to do that anymore. <laughs> I like listening to Searching currently. That's currently my favorite to listen to, to play his time. Well, you always try to force me to play it, though. I know. Cause you I like do. It. That's fine. He forces me to, you know, he starts playing it in the show, and I'm like, no, no. If I had somebody here that, that wrote and played and sang a song that I loved all the time, I'd be like, hey. This like, is the one we're going to do. Uh, I would just, I would probably just make you play it all the time. Mm-hmm. Just, I'm doing the dishes. Brand J. Play that song. I mean, I guess that's, right. why, that's why you put out CDs, so I can just push play, and I don't have to be cruel, exactly. but that's <laughs> never that easy. At oh least you're right. different this time. <laughs> right. different. You can just call her on speakerphone, and if we're just hanging out at the house, I'll just get the acoustic, and she can just sit there on the couch, and we'll play it, and yeah, you just listen to deal. us on speakerphone. I'm... We used to film videos all the time of us playing at home, but we just haven't had time. We, yeah, need, we need to do, do that, that more. Mm-hmm. People really like that. Yeah, there was one where... We were looking super, super casual, like you had a head wrap on and I had... No, a, you had a bonnet on. I had the, the yeah, hair bonnet. Yeah, you had yeah, the hair bonnet, the bonnet and I was in yoga pants. Yeah. Bubba showed his butt is the that, whole time towards the Is that the all camera. you guys were wearing? <laughs> yeah. That's kind of... Yeah, I, I didn't so. say where the bonnet was. <laughs> pretty casual. <laughs> <laughs> That's casual. It's extremely casual. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Sitting on the front porch, singing Harmless Exchange. Yeah, That's when you first wrote it. That's, that's my. Awesome. That's one of. I think that is my favorite song on the record. I love it, and it almost didn't make it, but it made it. Really? Should I play it later yeah. at the end of the episode? Should I just? Yeah. Heck oh. yeah. And what's it about? I don't Uh-oh. know. 
No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's pretty much harmless exchange is about exchanging something with another person that you're not all the way 100% sure about. You know, it, it can be an emotional exchange. It could be anything, really. Craigslist. It could be Craig. It could be Craigslist, <laughs> and you're like, I don't know about it. Like, it looks cool, but you know, it's a thought process song. So, even on Craigslist, <laughs> the trampoline. You probably need to take the trampoline back. So the song is about calling a friend and making them go meet somebody from Craigslist. Exactly. Yeah. That's a pretty. It's pretty relevant to our time. Yeah. Song. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty great. It's about meeting them at a quick trip. Yep, safe. for sure. Somewhere well lit. Safe, safe place. place. It's a safe place. Yeah. Safe yeah. place. You got the little hand thing down and everything. <laughs> yeah, that's the... Uh, mm-hmm. They changed it. It's a little different now. What do you, the hands are more like this, which is weird. Yeah, that looks the way you're doing it's it. It's like grabbing it titties. Like yeah. yeah, it's like, like I don't know. Is it really safe? It's a safe place. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a, I'm in a safe place whenever I'm s- snuggling boobs. I totally feel safe. <laughs> that picture. That voice was perfect. <laughs> I'm not going to try it again. Snake. No, I, won't. <laughs> I can't do it. Safe place. Same. We were talking no, about, creepy. about influences and, and stuff. And I was thinking about uh, what's getting popular, or maybe it's popular, maybe it got popular like months ago and I'm finally hearing the songs, but a lot of people are, are writing songs about accepting yourself and they're getting like ridiculously famous, like the love of my life, Colby Clay has one saying you don't have to try, and then all about that bass, I watched that video for that song and like I heard it, and I was like, man, I don't like this song at all, and then uh, I went to a burlesque show and Bree Coquette, one of the guests, I hope I'm saying her name right, uh, from the podcast performed that song and my girlfriend was like you gotta watch that video it's really great and so now i love that song and that's what it's about is uh is it because of the burlesque or because of the video uh the video is it's adorable as shit it's, it's, super it's cute. really adorable i she's haven't like, seen it well she's talking i don't do yeah. watch it a lot of us listeners <laughs> will have, have have seen it but isn't it cool that that's that's what's really popular and, yeah and some scenes it's about it's like, time yeah and it's cool you see that happening on social media and then all of a sudden tons of songs are about it which i hope it's not all like corporate hey this is getting popular sing some songs about it usually hating is. Hating yeah. yourself but it even, usually but is even, but even if it is if it's that's cool people, if they're doing better about themselves exactly. i'm into it i mean the fact that it's it's it took until 2014 for somebody to put out a song called happy that right. worked <laughs> right. yeah. like really right that i long. was gonna mention the happy thing that long man yeah wasn't uh wasn't he on oprah talking about how how happy it made him that happy made everyone happy. <laughs> he, was he was talking like about that stuff. redundant stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. That's a happy It's moment. good. That's really good stuff. But it, it is a wave, you know, it's people, but it's good. It's about it's good. time it's we have thing. a counterculture because I'm excited. My entire life has been spent with stuff on the radio. That's Ugh. about how, how, how well can you destroy yourself? Right. Yeah. I'm super sick of it. It's, it's almost just numbing now. Yeah. Shout out to yeah. stained <laughs> and limp biscuit. <laughs> Coming from a country artist. Well, you know, <laughs> there's also a tear in my beer, all that. I hope, I hope somebody in like big boots just goes and like, I'm going to check out the Sam and the Stylies. <laughs> <laughs> what, what if like a Stylie is also like a tool you use, like herding cattle? And like, actually, the hot shot is called a Stylie. Right. <laughs> that would be perfect. It would. He's like, I want to see how many animals he really did kill for those boots. <laughs> mm. I'm going to hear it from PETA. I just know it. Yeah, they're, they're listening. They're getting bored with everything. No, else. PETA, they were synthetic chinchillas. Right. <laughs> synthetic chinchillas. I, I just said perfect again. And I've been noticing while i'm editing that i get stuck on words and it's almost every episode there's a word that i repeat unnecessarily through the whole episode and people probably wouldn't notice except for me pointing it out but i'm i was editing last week's podcast and i said perfect like 67 (laughs) times and it was stupid stuff like oh i'm finally over this heartbreak perfect (laughs) Uh, (laughs) some of it like one of them was recall (laughs) instead of saying remember i was like do you recall and i said recall 70 times and I, i'm getting better at saying like like is is it's were pretty, you saying something over and over again today uh, has anyone I, noticed i, I, I haven't I, noticed. that's what i, I that's haven't. that's why i'm talking about it because i was thinking about it i was like oh man i said perfect what else am i saying today and and maybe it's talking about my girlfriend because that's happened like three times in this episode she has the brilliant idea of selling shot glasses with some of my tag words and then being like <laughs> every episode after i edit it be like oh shit the, the tag the trigger word today is is perfect so every time i say perfect you owe us a shot and then like 
asking how long people can listen before they're too drunk to continue on. Oh, yeah. Perfect. That's, oh, that's cool. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's a really drinkers, brilliant yeah. idea. <laughs> wow, that's that that's very unique. Mm -hmm. When it happens, uh, you should wait until about the 10th time that you said it. And then every time you say it after that, you should apply some wicked audio effect, like have a robot <laughs> voice say, <laughs> Perfect. And, and then the next perfect, you put like a flanger. It'd <laughs> be good. Mm -hmm. That would be funny. You could drill those tag words into the ground. Mm -hmm. I I'm into it. Sam, what do you guys have coming up? Sam and the Stylies after next Thursday with L Dub or Melissa last Wait, Thursday. Is, it's. Oh, yeah, that's right. We're in the past right now. Yeah, we're traveling the time. Um, let's see. <laughs> we're traveling the time. We don't have too much on the books right now. Um, we're going to be going back to, to Eureka Springs. But uh, I don't know. We're we're trying to figure out our future. So we're we're kind of in the balance of, a, of another drummer who it's just it's really hard to see him go. But it's kind of an inevi inevitable thing. So uh, we really want to get in the studio. That's that's kind of our number one priority. We're sitting on an album right now that we have recorded. Uh, I think you spoke about that. I heard that they're going to release it. Is what I heard. I'm just saying. We're going to gossip. release it. Speak me a song, man. I promise you guys. I promise. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> um, we're sitting on an album. Yeah, like I said before, and. Uh, our my main goal is to get in the studio with these guys with this group that we have right now. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> perfect. Somebody just passed out. <laughs> Somebody's <laughs> wasted. Okay. As a musician, if you see somebody on TV like playing guitar and it's really terrible or whatever, and you can tell that they're not actually playing guitar and you can tell it's hundred percent fake. Do you feel that way watching pawn shop TV shows? Yes. So you don't actually have a dude you call as like Right. Not to, well, you know, that's not the part that's fake about it. Sometimes there is a dude that, to whom I can refer about a specific niche uh, item. Uh, the part that's fake is, is these, these actors who are playing pawn shop employees. That's, they're, they're pawn shop employees playing actors playing pawn shop employees. That's yeah. an odd scenario. I totally get it. Yeah. Like, they really are pawn shop employees but now because they're on television they're pretending to be, be actors character, right. yeah and the producer is like Being, you're gonna be the dumb one you're gonna be yep. the mean one you're gonna be you know yeah yep. so they're like well i have to be the epitome of what my basic personality is if if ever there was a if if we had a pawn shop show at uh shout out tulsa county pawn um it Where's would that? it would have to be uh oh well, it's on uh, 33rd West Avenue and West 51st Street. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Uh, Tulsa County Pond, where people matter. Um, <laughs> You're not just a number. <laughs> that is the I thought we should change it to <laughs> Tulsa County Pond, where people are matter. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> uh, no, man. Yeah. Yeah. But as I was saying, if we had a show, a pawn shop show, it would have to be aired on like Adult Swim or something or HBO. Uh, it'd be the best one out there, in my opinion. I'm I'm sure. Mm -hmm. uh, details, please. Well, uh, here's here's an idea. Um, you know how they all have like you have hardcore pawn and you have pawn stars. Um, we were gonna name ours Kitty Pawn since it's all based on this sort of. <laughs> pornography industry <laughs> idea what would be the most outlandish thing that we could do with that and it would be kitty pawn uh, all right uh is it because you see so many cats on your facebook feed or is there a different kind of kitty you're talking about um it's may i mean it's basically because we see so many kitties in the pawn shop oh yeah People try and pawn all kinds of stuff. I'm telling you, I, and we don't we don't take anything that poops. <laughs> that's good to know. Nothing that poops. It's good to know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I am, I'm trying to come up with great ideas for things that poop that you would still take money for. Those expensive dolls that they have, that they, it, it actually poops. It's a little uh, kid's toy. The ones like from the, uh, like from the 90s or something, right? Uh, you, you would accept that. That's an exception to your rule, correct? I don't know. I'd have to look it up. Well, I just want two bucks. Really just two bucks. You have I just to make it all. Right. Well, I mean, it depends on what they're selling for, you know? <laughs> Most of the things that poop, like, 
after they die, they kind of stop doing that. Do right, but that after stuff? they die, they're they're not worth shit. They don't shit. poop anymore. <laughs> they're not worth poop after they die. No, no sweet enough. taxidermy things. Um, actually, sweet that's funny that you ask because it is uh, in the state of Oklahoma illegal to buy or sell taxidermy without a taxidermy license. Weird. Yeah. Well, the thing is. If they make it legal to buy and sell taxidermy, that creates a market for going out and killing animals and, and selling them as taxidermy, yeah. which is a good thing, man. I'm glad they yeah. have that license. I agree. Somebody at work showed me a cool video today. He was like, check out this awesome video. Uh, and this is this is going to just ruin the vibe. We're going to have to get it back. He was like, <laughs> like, check out this sweet video. And there's like some pigs going through a forest or going through a pasture. They're out, you know, pasture, you know, what I'm talking about. I know what a pasture is. I'm a country sure. guy. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and then like they shot a gas barrel and, and bust like, and I was like, why would you show me that? That's the most horrible thing. You have to, you have to warn me that I'm about to see something die. Mm-hmm. And, uh, uh, I don't know why I wanted to go there, but now that's, that's a, chest. Oh, it's terrible. That's a fair, uh, request. Like warn me if I'm going to see something die. Yeah. That's I, a terrible yeah, thing I don't just see. continue on the normal process of my day. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, it's pretty bad. I shot a uh, bird with a BB gun when I was a kid, <laughs> and I just felt like a piece of shit afterwards. That's happened to me as well. Never done it since. I uh, shot a scissor tail flycatcher. My dad. <gasps> no was, way. My dad was very angry. I don't think I knew what I was doing. Oh, I didn't know what no. it was. Like, like it was just on it's the fence. The state bird. And, I, and it didn't die. You know, just in case my statute of limitations are not up on killing a. State well, it bird. didn't die immediately. It probably just <laughs> oh, scissored man. off and died but slowly. I did feel miserable afterwards, oh, and, yeah. he, and my dad was like, "You, you only kill things you're going to eat." Yeah. From now on, that's the rule, boy. I ran over an armadillo with my car once, and it did a really cartoonish splat, and uh, <laughs> I didn't eat it. Oh no, splatting! Maybe, maybe it's on purpose. I ran over a chihuahua one time with my car, and it just got up and ran off. I straddled it. It probably fit in between the treads of your tire. They're pretty small. <laughs> they are small. Pretty yeah. small dogs. Lucky for them. Yeah. That's, a, that's a great evolution. It's an evolution. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're on the same page. Say, mm-hmm. like, can I steal a Sam song? Is that possible? Sam and the Stylies country song before it's released. Is it going to be about chihuahuas in the tread? Uh, I don't know. Chihuahuas You're the one in the tread. <laughs> yeah, you, you have it recorded. <laughs> no, I don't. Oh. But you and I can. Yes. Oh, we can, I'll we give can. you like 10% of whatever we make up. <laughs> so nothing. Yeah. It's actually, you're, <laughs> you're going to actually owe me money for it. Yeah. Because it's going to be so bad. What are you guys doing for Halloween? Ooh. You know, it's like every November 1st. I'm like, you know, next Halloween, I'm going to know far in advance who I'm going to be for Halloween. We say this every year. Every year. And then it gets around now, or even later, or even the day before. And it's like, well. We always come up with something really awesome, though. Yeah. So far, we've done a good job. One year, we were pimp and hoe, Bran and I. And Well, I like to call it pimp and hoes as a group. You yeah. know, like, yeah, we were more of like a, you know, our costume was together. Mm-hmm. You were, you know, just like, oh, pimp and hose. Sounds mm-hmm. like Santa's updated name for his elves. <laughs> pimp and employee. <laughs> <laughs> I've only ever had one really cool costume. And then the day of, I stole some, I mean, I borrowed some <laughs> items from work and painted them and printed off it like. I took the covers off of some shelves, which are these flat black pieces that go on the shelves and keep, like, so you can wipe off dust and everything. But they're not there any longer. I don't know where they went. They weren't taken and painted over, and I didn't glue paper apps on them. I didn't steal straps to, to make myself an iPhone. That was the only, like, cool costume I've ever had. And there was one app that I, I just printed off a bunch of apps. I, did, I just, like, Googled iPhone app and printed a bunch and, and glued them on there. And one towards the top was a wine bottle. So my friends had the brilliant idea of making that the drink app. So they, they waited till I was drunk enough to, to understand and, and go with it. But every time they pushed that app, I had to take a shot. Oh. So <laughs> at a party that got a little ridiculous. <laughs> that was... <laughs> the, those kegs were floated. Um yeah, that makes <laughs> my kidney hurt just yeah. thinking about it. Yeah, well, those are the younger years. I had a fun one last year. I did, uh, remember that SNL skit, Dick in a Box? <laughs> you oh, you were right. That <laughs> was great. You looked great as Dick in a Box. You were very convincing. It was perfect. 
I had to I had to do eyeliner or facial hair because my facial hair is really poor. Yeah. Poor old. It's poor facial hair. I get that. Does it need a loan? Yeah. Did you say <laughs> you get porn. that? Hmm? Did you say you get that? Or no, you said that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, was going to say your yeah, facial hair. We have the really same voice. Too. I know. Wow. That explains a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, because uh, even this morning at Brahms when I was going to get my sweet <laughs> breakfast burrito and, <laughs> and I was ordering a small hot mocha to get me to work and they said... I'm sorry, ma'am. Our mocha machine is out oh, of order. Really? And I was like, that's like the seventh time this week. Oh, it happens to me all the time. <laughs> I thought you were going to say they said, I'm sorry, Brain J. <laughs> I'm sorry, Brain J. <laughs> <laughs> I went to your, Brahms. Your hot room. mocha's not ready, but just breathe. Because we comped it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I went, to, I went to get some ice cream, and I probably shouldn't have been getting ice cream, and that was my instant karma. Shouldn't have. Shouldn't have. That's an Oklahoma term. I know I'm in a country man. And uh, pulled up to order my ice cream. And uh, she says, thank you, sir. Pull around. Mm. Mm. The, the Brahms, man, it's Brahms's fault. Yeah. This is, it's something about their uh, intercom system. It <laughs> has to be. Brahms's. Because the, the Brahms across the street from the colony <laughs> was the first time I got... I got called ma'am all three consecutive times you can get called ma'am at the drive-thru. You do like, have the voice of an angel, at, though. At, <laughs> at the order place, like, pull around, ma'am. At the first window, thank you, ma'am. And then, and then the third window, just you guys can guess what happened. Yeah. Have a nice day, ma'am. <laughs> it's like, I'm going to cut my hair, man. I'm going to do it. And I didn't. Then I just got used to it. What helped me get used to it was a group of dudes. We went to see somebody play in Edmond. I don't remember. I don't remember. I want to remember. Oh, it just left you? Yep. Damn. I like his song. Dang. Darn it. Yeah. Tarnation. Anyway, what helped me, we, 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 uh, we were all eating and the band's playing. It was like Cody Clinton's band, Cody Clinton and Visions mm-hmm. back in the day. And uh, I don't remember who else. Doesn't matter. But they were all talking about, like I walked up to a conversation about them complaining about their long hair making people confuse them as women. And they all had like sweet beards and they're all in bigger bands. And I was like... This just happens. I'm okay with it now. Yep. Mm-hmm. And and I think they eventually uh, probably stopped getting called ma'am. My day is coming soon. I'll never get rid of this voice. <laughs> the hairstyle. They're just going to keep saying sir. And, uh, I looked 12 when I graduated high school. <laughs> and this week was the first time I've really, really appreciated it. Because I've gotten a random group of high school people adding me on Facebook. I think maybe because... The year before us is high school reunion was last week, so like the the guys from next year are getting excited about their sweet high school reunion, and they all look like they're about to turn thirty, and I'm just like, I still look like seventeen. <laughs> yeah, you look pretty young. <laughs> so I mean, I may have gotten made fun of a little bit for being a baby face, but those it's guys, that some you of got, those, you got a little bit of the sexy stubble going on. I'm, now. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Yeah, I but, like it. <laughs> I love the thing that happens though, whenever you get confused for a woman because it happens to me all the time and I don't have long hair. <laughs> but <laughs> whenever somebody says, uh, have a nice day, ma'am, your voice all immediately drops. Cause you right. To, Thank you. Just, Thank thanks, you. you do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I need you to look absurd right now so I don't. I think. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> who was that? Who, who was that? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. I think the worst time I was I was a child I was like eleven and I was on the phone like somebody called to talk to my parents and they thought I was my mom and I was like you know probably I was like, you know, oh man I know uh, I answered like hello and they're like you just excuse me ma'am we'd like to know if you're interested yeah. in blah 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 and I, I was like oh, I'm I'm sorry I'm 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 their son and they <laughs> audibly laughed <laughs> oh. and I'm like oh, oh yeah. you'll have your day kid and uh, oh. that's, that's pretty rude looking back yeah it's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Man. It's terrible. Family members used to call our house when we were little, especially when I woke up in the morning and answered a hello. My grandma was like, put Brandy on the phone, Jamin. I'm like, this uh-huh. is Brandy. <laughs> Jamin, quit playing, put your sister on the phone. This is my sister. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I my whole it. life, it sucks, but it's okay. It hurts if I try and talk high. It hurts. Yeah. It's just not my natural voice. I mean, you try and talk low all the time. Sam's got a pretty high voice, too. Usually, I mean, when we, yeah. when we sing harmony, I'm typically singing low, and he's singing the high notes. Yeah. Yeah. Sam, will you please like finish it. the episode in your radio voice? I think I can handle it. Oh, do yeah, it. I think yeah. I'm ready now. Well, f- listeners, he started the episode, but while, before we hit record, I was talking about stuff, and Sam's over here double-fisting <laughs> beers and talking in this wonderful... <laughs> 
interpretation of a radio voice in a world no, i don't i don't have it this is this is my <laughs> radio voice you're listening to jason ferguson podcast <laughs> from a basement in tulsa <laughs> from a basement in tulsa <laughs> yeah. oh well, i'm sorry to put you on the spot it was it was pretty it's okay great. i don't yeah. mind being put I think on you, the spot. I, I think you should get i think you should give it another try in five four three you're listening from a basement in Tulsa with Jason Ferguson. Tonight we'll feature Bran J, Nathaniel Wright, and Samuel Banks Jones. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> uh, Wasn't um, sure how to end that one. Yeah. <laughs> you were searching so deep. Uh, yeah, I wish I had that voice. So piercing. I would like. <laughs> Apparently, I was searching very deep because all I came up with <laughs> go bug yourself. Well, GFY. you can find anything. So. <laughs> can I get one breakfast burrito and one large hot mocha? <laughs> Sure, ma'am. <laughs> Come around the corner. That's okay, <laughs> professor. First window. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. It's funny though, because that's also my pet name for Brand J is Hot Mocha. <laughs> professor. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> professor. <laughs> professor Hot Mocha. Oh yeah, Professor. <laughs> professor. Oh yeah, mm. Professor. Mm. I didn't hear Professor, professor. Hot Mocha. Mm. Well, thank you guys so much for coming over to my house and drinking in the basement. Thanks for having I us. Really. Had a good time again. I feel like we talked more about music this episode. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my We've friend. We've got more going on. Ooh, perfect timing. My friend asked for a shout out, and I said, "If the chance arises." I was like, "So, my friend, stage manager James. He he's also a stage manager. And he does awesome when I'm playing shows. He texted me recently. He's like, I just listened to the Sam and Brenjay episode. No sticky pages." And, uh, <laughs> so, so we'll leave that. If you would like to know what that means, go back and listen because we don't really need to go into the story. Oh, the but sticky, pages. sticky pages, the sticky pages. But yeah, yeah. Thank you guys for coming. Is back. he the one with epilepsy? Uh, I don't believe so. Okay. I, actually, I know that for sure that it's not him. You know it's not him. Yeah, I don't know why okay. I said I don't believe so. Perfect. Well, you never know. He might be hiding it. <laughs> yeah. Until there's a strobe light, and then he's and there's no more hiding it. Well, he he works <laughs> managing stages, so I can't imagine. <laughs> I got it, babe. <laughs> I Thank got you, it. Nathan, for joining us on the, this Thanks a lot, time. Jason. It's it's your first time on the podcast, and I hope there's many more. Hmm. Thanks it's a lot. Fun. And we're, what song are we going to play? Harmless Exchange. Harmless Exchange. exchange. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Excellent. Recall. Dang. <laughs> Here's recall dang. <laughs> Those are all trigger words from previous episodes. Let's just get them all in there. Uh, but anyway, Harmless Exchange, thank you guys for being here. And this is Harmless Exchange from Brenjay's new album, Power Source. Perfect. Excellent. Ma'am. Sweet. <laughs>
take advantage of me Cause I'm honest to the T And he's helping with my dreams But I know something 